So let's talk about, I'm going to just create a new document because this one's 55 pages now. Let's talk about using Excel files. So if you created something in Excel or someone created a table in Excel and you wanted to use it in your project, you can choose file and you can place an Excel file. And I didn't pre-plan this, so I'm just going to search for Excel SX and see what I have saved on my computer. Um, I'm going to use this travel form that I was using for a trip that I did for work. So by default, if you choose file and place an Excel spreadsheet and you do not show import options, you'll get that loaded cursor that says there's something here, click to show it. And you can click and it will import all the content from the sheet. But it will look crazy because it imports as a tab set. So if you go to the layout menu, I'm sorry, the type menu at the bottom, show hidden characters, you will see that there are a bunch of tabs that represent all of the, the cells that were in your Excel spreadsheet. However, if you choose File Place and you choose to show the import options, you will have the option to import as a table, unformatted, or formatted. So let's do a table that's unformatted. And you can see now, it looks a little bit more like the table that I was working with. Let's see what happens if we do it again. File, place. Now, it doesn't always work with the formatting because of some things that would work in Excel that won't work in InDesign. But we can import. And this time, let's do a formatted table and see what that looks like. It didn't do much different, so we have to go and compare the differences, but it will bring in as much of the formatting as possible from the original. If I wanted to take that table and I wanted it to be a table in my document, I would bring it in as a table. If I just needed the information and I was going to format it as a tab set, you just have to choose File, Place. It's not the best example because it's a form and it's not like a spreadsheet with data. Um, but if you just place it, it'll be a tab set. And then you can use, whoops. So um, things in InDesign are sticky, meaning that it remembered the last setting that I chose. So I have to go into show import options. And I need to say, go back to the original. And so I want it to come in as a tabbed set of text. I'm not sure why it's remembering that first one, but it should come in as a tab set. And then knowing the things that you know about a tab set, you could then use the tabs panel to format the content. The last thing I want to show you is if you're working on a document, let's say that you're designing a multi-page something and you are working on the layout, but the person who's responsible for giving you the text or the articles has not yet provided them, you can always fill your box with placeholder text by having your text cursor blinking and choosing the type menu and all the way at the bottom choose fill with placeholder text. It puts, I believe it's Latin text that if you could speak Latin, I'm pretty sure it doesn't say anything. It was It's just a bunch of random words. But it looks more like text than what would be if you were to just kind of hit your keyboard and try to make a sentence. That doesn't resemble an actual paragraph of, of information. But even though we can't read the Latin, we can use the placeholder text so that we can make decisions, right? We can change the typeface and we can make it whatever typeface that we want. We can change the size of the typeface. You can change the color of the typeface. I like 80% black. You can take the frame and you can go to object text frame options. You can make it a three column layout. You can give it you can give it a headline, right? We can make the headline black again, or hundred percent black. You can change size. And so you can start making design choices about this article. One trick is to decrease the letting on a headline and it will look more like a group than a paragraph. You can even go back into 
is it in here? Object text frame options. Can even do a column span. And I want to say, is it a character setting? Yeah, it's a it's a paragraph setting. So you can select this frame here. You can select the the line of text that you're working with in your multi-column text frame, and you can hit the option file menu and choose span columns. And you can choose to span columns, and you can span two columns if you want to. And you can format your article that way. I obviously would not put one article per page if I was doing like a newsletter. So you could decide that this article is going to be this wide. You can then change typeface. Maybe you don't like this one anymore. And so you can, you can start doing all of your design work for your project without having the actual text. So we can do some space after paragraph here. Um, you can even decide that you want all of your text to be make sure it all goes that way. You can make sure all of your text is justified if that's what you want your alignment to be, etc. And so there's a number of things you can do in the design process without necessarily being able to have the exact words you're going to need for your article. Another benefit of this is once you're done your design, if you're working as part of a team to make a newsletter, maybe you're working for the school newspaper or you're doing a group project or you just work for a company that doesn't specialize in graphic design, they just are trying to make a newsletter. Um, what you can do is you can do a word count on the article. So you could say, okay, well, I set aside this much space for that article, and then you can do a word count by highlighting that text to say how many words are there, and whoever's responsible for writing the article, you can say, I need a 200-word article, or I need a 700-word article.